Hello and welcome back for another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be answering some questions and some comments that I received on my last video. That video, if you haven't seen it, you should go back and watch it. And what we were doing was transforming and cleaning data within a fabric notebook. What I said during that video is it was kind of like a one-off piece of analysis. Um, and Rita sent in two really interesting questions, actually, and really helpful questions that I'm gonna be answering in this video. Number one, this commenter has picked up on the fact that we hard-coded the JSON file path, which was okay for that scenario. We kind of got some data. But if you want to embed that notebook into a workflow or into a pipeline that's going to run automatically, we need a way to make that file path dynamic. So that's what we're going to be doing in the first part of this video. The second question that was asked was, okay, so we've got this notebook now and we've scheduled our pipeline. How do we make sure that the notebook also runs on a schedule? So in the second half of this video, I'm going to be showing you two different ways to schedule notebooks. Okay, so just to pick up where we left off in the last video, we were working in this fabric notebook for data engineering. And the hard-coded file path was this one here. So obviously this isn't gonna work if we're doing this on a dynamic daily schedule because we've hard-coded in a specific date here, which was the 16th of the 8th, 2023. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is making this dynamic. And there's a few different ways of doing this, obviously. So now we're gonna go down into this function that I've made to help us to load the data dynamically. So here's the function that I've created here. And what it does is, is called read in today's data. And it dynamically calculates the file path based on today's date or the time now, basically, or when the pipeline runs, when the notebook runs and it returns our data frame. So it's gonna run through the rest of the coding logic once we've dynamically calculated our file path. And how do we do that? Well, we're using this date time library, which is one of the most commonly used package, or at least for me, it's the package I probably use the most. We can call datetime.now to get the current time. Then we can use, I've never actually said this word out loud, Strif time, <laughs> I don't know. But it's basically string formatted time. And so we can convert a date time object. So this is a date time, it returns a date time type. And then we're gonna convert it into a string of this format. And we want the format to be year, month, day, because that's the structure of our folder structure here, right? So that's gonna return a value like this. Then we're gonna just concatenate these together with our files, our file path, and then our file name, like so. And so that's gonna end up like this. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna read in the JSON from that dynamic file path and return it from our function. And we're wrapping that in a try, uh, try accept because if this dynamic, if a file does not exist at that file location, then we want to basically throw an exception and that can be logged in our monitoring hub as well. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And if we run this, so that's successfully, and I've just run it manually just to show you that it's working. And then none of this is uh, changed. So this is all the same. Again, we've run this here, we can click that. And then we're gonna append at the end. So all of the rest of the code is the same. We've just changed that, the dynamic reading from the file path. So that's what we've changed there. Now moving on to the second question, it talked about scheduling. So now that we've got a kind of dynamic way of running this notebook, how do we schedule it? So there's two different ways, or maybe more than two, but one of them is you can see the schedule button right here within the notebook. So this is to set a schedule just for this notebook to run whenever you like, really. And we can turn on the schedule. Uh, we can do it hourly, daily, or weekly. And we can set a start and end time to our schedule and tell it which time zone we want to be working on. But this isn't the method that I'm gonna use for this example because we want our 
schedule to be linked to our data pipeline schedule. And in fact, what we're going to do is embed the notebook to run after our first activity in the data pipeline. So what's going to happen is we're going to schedule our data pipeline. That's going to call every morning to the API, get our data. And then on success, we're going to run our data engineering. So this has a few benefits and it means that if this API request fails, we can add in some failure logic, some monitoring, some fail activity, basically. And we're not going to run the data engineering notebook when we don't have any data there. So that's a benefit there. So to set up this notebook activity, it's quite simple. You just add in the notebook activity from here. And in the settings, you tell it which of your notebooks you want to add in here. So I've just selected this one and there you go. And so now every time our pipeline runs, so we've set the schedule here and the schedule is running daily at 5.20. So now at 5.20 every morning, we're going to get data from our API and then our notebook is going to run and take that data from the files location in our lake house, transform it in a dynamic way and then load it into our lake house table. So, so thank you very much for your questions, Amrita. And if anyone else has questions, make sure you send them in because I love reading them. And yeah, I'm happy to make any content, anything that's not clear, I can make another video to kind of clarify some of the things from previous videos. If you're not subscribed already, then make sure you subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.